Assalomu alaykum hurmatli kuzatuvchilar. Navbatdagi Target IELTS ko'rsatuviga xush kelibsiz. Bilganingizdek, biz o'quvchilarning bilim darajasiga ular qanchalik IELTS ga tayyor ekanligini tekshiramiz. Hozir buni to'g'ridan to'g'ri guvohi bo'lasiz. Qani, ketdik yo'masa. So, hello dear IELTS candidate. Uh, so, my name is Zakir John Kamal Jonov and I am going to be your examiner for this part of the exam. As you know, there is a three parts and for each part I will ask a question. So, please wait our instructions. Uh, so, for the first part, we will start with the first part. So, for the first part, I will ask some general questions about yourself and interest. So, before that, can I have your identification, please? Yes, you may. Uh -huh. Karimov. Lol. Uh huh. Thank you very much. Here, your identification back. Uh, so, can we start, Blog? Yes. Uh, so, Blog, let's talk about time management. How do you usually organize your time? I every day organize my daily plan. I I cannot start my day without planning and. Uh, I all, always prioritize my t my daily tasks uh, from from things which I should do today and should will done today uh -huh. and uh, what should I avoid? Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Is it easy to manage time for you? As for me, it, first time it it was too hard and uh, by the practicing day by day it's become too easy. Uh huh. Okay. What is the last plan that you made? If be honest, my last plan was uh, my general plan to near future. Uh, <clears throat> one of the one of the position of my plan was filled by ending IELTS course, and uh -huh. after that take. Uh huh. Ta after they take. SAT course. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, below, let's talk about mirrors. How often do you use a mirror? Admittedly, I use mirrors, mirror a every day. <coughs> uh, I use mirror, for example, as a purpose of brush my teeth and uh, comb my hair. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, do you use a mirror before buying clothing? Yes, I think it's thing thing which ha which I should do before buying because I cannot understand how it suits me and uh -huh. uh, how it looks on me. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Have you ever bought a mirror? Yes, I was bought. One of them about two weeks ago. Uh -huh. uh, my last one was broken by the reason of earthquake, and uh, that's why I buy. I bought. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Um, so let's talk about losing and finding things. What should people do if they find something? Uh, my suggestion of that who find uh, who find anything which lost is reporting to the near police station uh -huh. about founding and uh, that's it uh -huh. is it okay to keep an item that you found i think it's unfair because maybe this person <coughs> needs this item more than you and uh, i think it would be better if if you Report to the police station. Mm -hmm. Okay. What things do people usually find in usually, the country? Usually in uh, streets of Uzbekistan may maybe found something portable as a wallet or telephone or something mm -hmm. something set. So thank you very much. So this is end of the part one and we'll continue with part two. So your topic is describe a time when you wasted your time. So now you have one minute to prepare your answers. If you wish, you can take notes. So here the pen and paper. So if you wish, you can take notes.
So, dear uh, IELTS Canada, unfortunately time is up. Please start speaking right now. Well, I've been asked to talk about time when I waste, waste, waste my valuable time. I do several time-consuming activities, activities such as playing, playing phones, scrolling sites and uh, attracts her. But one of the biggest, biggest one was watching TikTok videos, which every day take my time about two hours, two hours a day. And uh, so I've been watching TikTok, TikTok videos almost every day. And uh, it was a thing which I thing which I do right after first thing I do right after I wake up and uh, <clears throat> I spend time time on TikTok whenever I have a spare moment at the learning time or working time and uh, whenever during the day. Mm -hmm. Always when I when I have notification from TikTok, I I cannot ignore it because it's too interesting. And uh, as soon as when I when I see TikTok notifications, I open the I open the application and uh, start scrolling. And first first videos which I saw was was one of the stupid videos and uh, which attract me <clears throat> I cannot I cannot stop scrolling since I I always expected something interesting <clears throat> something interesting as a life hacks but I never remember remind about it and I never use it <coughs> so uh, time is up Thank you very much. So this is end of the part one. So we'll continue with part two. So I will ask some uh, questions which are related to part two's question. Um, <clears throat> um, so, uh, Blorodin, uh, what things make people stressed in everyday life? I think day by day people become more more sensible to stress and uh, anything as a uh, losing money or something this kind may people do stress it and uh, make people stress it uh -huh. okay thank you how important is to have a, a daily routine I think it's definitely important because Many people who don't have daily routine, they spontaneously do something and uh, they always lost their time and uh, I think have a daily routine is most effective way to plan your day. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, do you think now people have better work-life balance than in the past? Yes, definitely. People become more more organized and uh, they have a daily plan than used to be mm -hmm. uh, for example for example <coughs> they they have a lot of time by the reason of modern technologies as a car and uh, this kind of things and they they may have a have their meal delivered mm -hmm. and that's why they have a lot of time and uh, they manage their time easily uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Does technology help to improve life-work balance? Yes, definitely. By the reason of inventing new technologies, people become have day by day have um, more time to spend with a family and uh, mm -hmm. and it, and technologies make their life more easier and uh, automatically it's helped to improve work life balance uh, mm -hmm. it helps not only to work work and life balance but also to make money and uh, meet ends mm -hmm. okay thank you very much so this is end of the speaking test
Thank you for participating. Hello once again, dear uh, ladies and gentlemen. So this is the another part of our video uh, where the mistakes and feedbacks will be presented and the mistakes which have been done by our candidate and also uh, the band descriptor public band descriptor will be uh, explained uh, for you for especially for english learners uh, so uh, actually uh, the exam was uh, good and uh, our candidate uh, performed it very well and I hope he enjoyed it and uh, and also I hope that he uh, felt the real atmosphere of uh, exam and but he made some mistakes and also I will show these mistakes and uh, I will also provide some feedbacks for him uh, so uh, uh, he he made some mistakes like uh, I was bought actually uh, he should uh, say that I bought it or my last one broken he said but he forgot has so my last one has broken it should be actually and he said that pupils uh, in actually it should be uh, people not pupils and also he confused adverb with adjective uh, he used adverb instead of adjective uh, in some uh, parts um, and but actually it was good even uh, the nine band candidates also make uh, mistakes as we are human we have a tendency to make mistakes so it's okay uh, so let's move on the grammar section um, actually he, he used really good grammar and also he used collocations uh, which makes uh, which is good really and which makes the uh, which makes examiners to put higher mark and uh, so let's analyze the band description so with the help of band description I will assess uh, our candidate so actually this is the speaking band description this is the public version so unfortunately this band descriptor is being neglected or ignored by students it's really bad uh, you know what i do i teach my student that the examiners are monkeys and this band descriptor is banana so if you want to get an eight so give this banana to monkeys i mean to examiners um so uh, here it's it's clear that if you speak like this uh, you of course you get uh, your like band score uh, so uh, let's learn it uh, so let's start with uh, uh, fluency and coherence I would say uh, he performed it very well and I would give for this performance six for the fluency and coherence actually he is willing to speak at length and so may lose some coherence at times due to the occasional repetitions and self-correction or hesitation actually our candidate uh, had uh, some hesitations uh, on word choice and ideas or and um, looking deeply so uses range of connective and discord markers but not always appropriate actually he used it uh, some connectives like not only but also or the first thing that I should speak like these phrases so it was really good I would say the fluency and coherence uh, six and about lexical resource I think uh, the, by the way the lexical resource means the vocabulary so, uh, so here he used really good vocabulary he used collocations like take a course or uh, have a notification or compare and meet endless uh, so it was really good so i would give uh, for this performance for the vocabulary section seven uh, looking at the band description uses vocabulary sources flexible to discuss a variety of topics actually he had a, a wide range of vocabulary to discuss all topics because uh, we have uh, talked about uh, mirrors uh, in part one and um, and about other topics so he was able to talk ab about these topics uh, 
and he used really good topic specific vocabularies and, uh, and uh, he uses some less common and idiomatic vocabulary and shows some awareness of style and collocation so uh, unfortunately uh, when Uzbek people or Uzbek English learners uh, listen the word less common vocabulary they think that I should uh, use C1 or C2 vocabularies more uh, they think that they should uh, use academic vocabulary but here uh, less common vocabulary does not mean that you have to use uh, C1 or C2 vocabularies uh, I mean the academic vocabulary so what does it mean the less common vocabulary let me explain you so uh, for example our student used it meet and this uh, as you know the, uh, probably all of you know that word meet actually here the meet does not mean that you chat with or you meet your friend actually meet and this that you cover your expenditures so here meet uh, comes in other meaning totally different meaning so this is the less common vocabulary or let's take an example of uh, another um, example so uh, run as you know what is it run uh, you, you know it yeah it's running walking fast or running is the action but what about run a business here actually run does not mean does not show the walking or the action actually run a business means the manage business yeah uh, so this is the less common vocabulary so uh, make sure that you have understood and and uh, my advice would be for the English learners not to just use only C2 vocabularies or other kind of uh, C1 or academic words actually you don't have to use such a vocabulary please uh, try to sound uh, natural and try keep your speech simple and uh, another thing, use paraphrase effectively. Yes, our candidate paraphrased some questions effectively. It was quite successful. And so moving on the grammar range and the accuracy. Here uh, we should we'll look here, the grammar range and accuracy. Um, uh, the students think that if I use a lot of uh, grammatical range or the tenses or complex sentence, I get a high mark. Actually, uh, the grammars which are which you are using should be accurate. So accurate means uh, error free. Error free. Error free means there shouldn't be any mistakes. Uh, so, uh, I would say for the grammar section 7, because uh, our candidate used really good grammars, uh, he showed the, um, a lot of, uh, that he knows a lot of tenses and the structure of sentences and he used uh, complex sentence, compound sentence and simple sentence and he used a lot of uh, tenses like um, present perfect continuous or present perfect um, and what I like about his speech was uh, usage of two grammars so they are make somebody do something and have something done so uh, let me explain these two grammars so uh, have something done means that, that you pay money for the service and the service is done by others actually you don't do it so you give the money and and others uh, others do it for you for example uh, of course I know that you don't cut your own hair yeah or do you cut your own hair <laughs> so of course the barber cuts our hair so you can say that instead of barber cuts my hair uh, I have my hair cut here means uh, the service is done by others now you are paying money our student said that now people uh, people have their meal delivered so this is the really good um, grammar and I'm sure that examiners uh, examiners will um, consider it and they uh, mark it appropriately 
Uh, so, and what about make somebody do something means, uh, make somebody do something means encourage someone to do something or force someone to do something. Uh, for example, uh, usually teachers make their students do something. And he said that the technologies uh, make our life easier. So that was really good grammar. Uh, so uh, I'm sure for the grammar section he can get eight and I would assess it uh, seven. Um, about pronunciation, I uh, had some uh, problems with pronunciation. Actually, he should work on it uh, hard. Uh, he made some pronunciation mistakes. So I would say it is six so in total um uh, i would say i would mark our student 6.5 for this performance but actually he's a my student and i know that uh, he has a potential to get eight in a real exam and i hope he will do it um so uh, thank you very much uh, for watching us so this is end of uh, the target ielts and uh, i hope it was um, useful for you thank you very much Xo'p, hurmatli kuzatuvchilar, mana o'quvchimizning test jarayonini ko'rdik va uning natijasi bilan tanishib chiqdik. Bu ko'rsatuvimizni davom etadi va keyingi sonlarini kutib qoling, bizdan uzoqlashmang.